Welcome back to the MOOC NPTEL course on Bioengineering and Interface with Biology and Medicine. In previous lecture, we had discussed various basic problems which affect all of us equally irrespective of which discipline biology, medicine or engineering we belong to. Today I will try to provide some examples on how bioengineering has already initiated advancements in multiple disciplines of healthcare and technology. Let us first start with bio inspired engineering. So, studying nature's creation and elements and from such inspiration developing design and models to solve complex human problem comes under bio inspired engineering. Let us take a couple of examples here for bio inspired engineering. Look at this flower which is lotus flower and its leaf. They provide us an example for waterproofing. If you look at the leaf from the lotus, it has the crevices of microscopic rough leaf surface which traps the air upon which the water droplets float. So, lotus gives us lesson for waterproofing. Now, this observation was utilized by a company Green Shield which is a company inspired by the nature. They have made the chemicals which use lotus effect uh, which can be used for the waterproofing in the paints. Just imagine that you know in Mumbai and many parts in the world so much rain happens and buildings look so ugly because the paints will wash off as you know with the heavy rains. With having these kind of uh, waterproof uh, paints could be so useful for these building and one could achieve high water and stain repellency. Let us look at another example for architecture. These termite mounds they maintain very stable temperature inside by the process of passive cooling. The creation of sustainable buildings one could take lessons from these termites. Look at this elegant building in Zimbabwe, East Gate building. Their air conditioning system is modeled on the self cooling mount termites and it has resulted into mechanical or passive cooling system which has used 10 percent energy for ventilation than what is used for the conventional building. Just imagine that this minor observation of architecture from termites have resulted into such an efficient and elegant building which uses very less power and it still provides the cooling system for the people who live inside. Now, let us go to another example. On the screen you can see the dolphin. Dolphin provides inspiration for tsunami alert system which can be used for warning people about tsunamis. Dolphins in their family they recognize calls almost 25 kilometer away when they are in the water to cope with the sound scattering behavior of the high frequency. Now, a company Evo Logics they use this particular uh, understanding from dolphins and developed high performance underwater sonar and underwater robotic systems which has resulted into high performance underwater modem for data transmission which is currently employed in tsunami early warning systems in Indian oceans. Let us now move on to another application transportation and look at this bird on the screen which is kingfisher. People have taken the learning efficiency from kingfisher and a chief engineer and bird watcher in Japan Iji Nakatsu. He modeled the front end of Shinkansen bullet train which is inspired from the beak of kingfisher. It has resulted into very quiet train and less electricity and it travels much faster. So, people who are living nearby they used to face lot of problem because of the noise from these trains and because of uh, the way kingfisher goes in the water it splashes the fish with silence that kind of observation help this bird watcher to model the front end of this particular train which is the super fast bullet train in the world. Let us now talk about fog harvesting technology and lessons have been taken from the beetle which is Stenochaira gracipilis. The technology from an IIT Bombay alumnus uh, who studied at MIT he took lessons from this beetle 
and then developed this uh, meshes which kind of mimics the similar uh, work what uh, these beetles do. So, Nabib de desert beetle uh, they collect water droplets uh, during the morning fog hours and then try to roll back and let moisture roll down into its mouth and therefore, it can conserve the water and it still fulfill its water requirement in the desert area. So, they developed a device which consists of fence like meshes to attract droplet and then that could be dripped into the container. And now, the villagers who are living in the surrounding area who were so much affected because of desert and they did not have uh, drinking water, they are at least able to collect some drinking water in the morning hours. So, as Andy McIntosh uh, has mentioned, the natural world is full of excellent designs that we can learn from. There is a need of interaction between good biologist and engineer to transform many of these observations into devices and very useful outputs. Let us now discuss some of the uh, examples of uh, different projects which are being pursued by technology giants who are really investing heavily right now in the mega biology projects. Many of you are engineering uh, undergrads who wish to uh, pursue a career uh, which can be very attractive, which can be cutting edge and what you may have to think about in this era of 21st century, everything is you know really going to be transformed with the biology revolutions. So, there is lot of you know integration from technology into the biological application which is currently going on and all your dream companies whether you talk about Google, IBM, you think about you know, all the, the big mega projects happening in these companies are actually now evolving with the biological applications. So, let us look at this particular project which is Google X project or the Google brain. Uh, there is lot of you know uh, research happening in the area of artificial intelligence, how to make the, the Google brains which aims to build intelligent machines by incorporating artificial intelligence. Even Google projects also incorporate smart contact lenses. Just imagine that the contact lens if I remove the glass and we uh, uh, I wear this you know contact lens and that lens has the sensors which could sense uh, for the uh, measurement of glucose uh, and there are the chips which can monitor these uh, glucose level uh, throughout the day. That data being recorded and being you know sent to the mobile or sent to some other devices which could alert an individual that at which time you know the, the, the dip in the glucose level because you know it is directly in the touch with the body fluid you are doing the real time monitoring of glucose level and diabetes and you know many problems like this can be monitored in the real time manner. So, these are the kind of you know the, the very interesting projects which are happening at Google level of course, there are many interesting other projects in biology, but just to uh, I am giving you a flavor of various things which are ongoing in the area of technology and biology. Another mega project is uh, in IBM which is IBM Watson, they are using the supercomputing power again artificial intelligence and supercomputing in which way could be utilized to make a computer which could work if not better than human uh, at least can think like human uh, and then provide solutions to various medical problems and many other applications where uh, Watson uh, can be utilized to provide uh, the, the, the help and solutions. So, uh, you can see that you know there are many uh, these kind of you know latest projects which are biology driven happening in different you know major companies like Google, IBM, Microsoft, etcetera. And these are just very few examples almost all the uh, tech giants are currently focusing on in some other way different type of mega biological problems whether things are related to the healthcare issues or energy issues. Uh, many of these problems are currently undertaken uh, which is on the interface of bioengineering. On other hand there is lot of revolution is happening in the human genetics and medical research area. So, you know uh, several years ago in, in fact decades ago uh, the doctors used to prescribe medicine just based on certain biochemical parameter testing. Now, things are really revolving very fast and the entire uh, medical area is trying to evolve and try to incorporate understanding based on different type of gene and protein technologies how they can provide some more accurate information. So, for example, personalized omics profiling is one of the attractive uh, area which is you know really ongoing and lot of revolutions are happening in this particular area where an individual's 
all you know body samples different uh, body fluids and bio specimens are analyzed at different type of biomolecular level to look at their DNA, RNA, protein at the omics level especially with the genomics, transcriptomics and proteomics technology and then try to provide some sort of information which is unique for that individual. So, in this slide I have shown you one example from uh, Lucas Wertman uh, who was suffering from leukemia and after they identified that a specific mutation which is FLT3 mutation FMS like tyrosine kinase 3 overexpression uh, is found in this particular uh, in, in this case, uh, then they are able to target a specific inhibitor uh, sunitinib which was actually approved by FDA for the renal cell cancer. So, just imagine that by knowing the uh, what could be the cause for a disease, if you can identify the right mutation, right you know targets, then you can provide more effective therapy. So, uh, this is one of the inspiring example in which a researcher could actually learn about his genome and then you know finally, uh, got some solution which could help to find very personalized medicine. Fortunately, during my last year of fellowship, uh, again, um, started feeling a little bit more run down. It, it happened more suddenly this time. This past July was diagnosed again with uh, relapsed leukemia. Was admitted into the hospital and started on very strong chemotherapy. Unfortunately though, uh, the leukemia did not go into remission after being treated with this very high dose chemotherapy. There were no real promising treatments on the horizon and so um, things looked rather bleak. But at the same time as I was being treated, uh, my leukemia genome uh, was being sequenced by the Genome Institute uh, here at Washington University School of Medicine. We got back the sequencing results which showed that there were promising targets that were not even in the scope of uh, our standard treatment protocols for this type of leukemia. Because of those results I was able to start less aggressive chemotherapy that I could tolerate and then targeted therapy that had been approved for actually renal cell or kidney cancer. Within a few days, my blood counts improved, and within a few weeks, my leukemia was in remission. So it was really uh, going from a situation that looked really bleak to now a situation where there was hope again. There are more examples like this, uh, which is currently happening in the in the clinical area, uh, integrative personalized omics profiling. Uh, Dr. Mike Schneider from Stanford University. Uh, in USA, he profiled his own body samples for you know almost uh, uh, 14 months and periodically analyzed in the longitudinal manner that what happens you know at different time interval, the level at the you know protein level fluctuation, metabolite level fluctuation, and those give very novel insight that you know uh, how the you know body can sometime uh, get affected with different type of diseases and what kind of pathways could be changed in response to those. Now, you know various medical hospitals especially one shown here in the in the Michigan uh, Center for Translational Pathology, they are using you know very systematic way of looking at both clinical and omics profile of individuals and then try to utilize that information to provide patients a uh, very uh, personalized treatment. Dr. Arul Chinayan and his team has published you know, many landmark papers in this area and which has shown elegantly that how understanding an individual's personalized omics profiling could be so helpful for the treatments. You know other mega projects which are happening currently, intention is to look at what is maximum molecular changes happening in a given individual and to screen the similar things in large population. So, the human phenome project in, uh, uh, in London, they are looking at uh, profiling all metabolites uh, in healthy and uh, populations affected from different diseases and trying to understand different type of you know metabolic networks which are being uh, perturbed uh, you know as the healthy individuals acquire different diseases and those mega projects you know being pursued at National Phenome Center which is now providing you know the very uh, interesting and elegant uh, publications and examples in which we now we can understand the human physiology and human you know phenotypes by looking at both mass spectrometry and NMR based technology uh, which is providing these kind of big data. So, the field which is emerging now is uh, omics and system biology, where along with clinical information, information obtained at the gene level, genome, 
transcript level transcriptome, protein level proteome, metabolites at the metabolome level and phenotypic behavior at the phenome level together integration of that could be very powerful. And this entire field is generating so much large data set which is comes under the big data. It requires a lot of computational power, computational analysis which is again you know can be pursued by engineering undergrads like you students and how to integrate those information, build the models, create simulations and then use those information to predict the behavior of unknowns is being pursued by a lot of computational engineers in the area of system biology. So, I hope that you know now you are getting a feel that in which way biology is getting integrated and applied with many disciplines and why it is you know so much important to integrate people from different disciplines together to bring the best minds to solve the, the major problems which requires integration of different skill sets. Now, coming back to IIT Bombay uh, where uh, uh, I am currently located, uh, bio research is a reality at IIT Bombay. Uh, almost 15 percent of our faculty at IIT Bombay are actively involved in doing bio research. Uh, and wide spectrum is being covered from looking at uh, the basic to applied and translational research. In fact, we did some sort of survey at IIT Bombay and found that you know not only uh, the department of bioscience and bioengineering is actively involved in doing bio research, but many departments including chemistry, chemical engineering and even the departments like you know the MEMS, electrical, mechanical, uh, maths, physics and of course, computer science. Many of these departments are actively involved in the interface of biology and engineering and many applications of healthcare being pursued in these particular uh, departments. In fact, IIT Bombay working very closely with many surrounding hospitals which are uh, providing a healthcare system. So, we have a healthcare uh, research consortium at IIT Bombay. Uh, where many local hospitals, different you know pharma companies along with IIT Bombay faculty are involved to pursue many projects jointly. It just kind of gives you the feel that why you know there is this kind of integration is, is required and it is already reality which is happening in our campus. Many of our faculty uh, are from engineering background, some are from medical background, some are from basic science background. They are pursuing interdisciplinary bio research. For example, shown here is one of the mobile based portable diagnostic system which has been used for urine analysis to blood sugar test. So, again these kind of mobile based portable devices can be so handy and very useful. Another lab at IIT Bombay they have developed different type of you know prosthesis de uh, devices which could be uh, very quickly now translated to the actual you know clinical reality and many of the uh, lab trials and the clinical trials are actually currently underway to bring these devices to the hospitals. Few faculty members are also looking at mobile phone based diagnostic platforms to detect sickle cells in the blood at the point of care di diagnostic devices. Again you know many of these uh, requires understanding of engineering uh, solutions on one hand for the devices point of view and then the basic biological concepts which is required to know the exact problem and how to provide accurate solutions. What is will be you know motivating for you to learn that many students who, uh, who learn biology at IIT Bombay even if they are engineering undergrads like you, then eventually at you know uh, you never know that you know one of the ideas is sparks your mind and you know at some point you might want to pursue that for your whole career. So, there has been many uh, you know, students from IIT Bombay alumni who moved to, uh, to you know, further uh, pursue their career and then now they are faculty in different uh, parts of the world which they are actually pursuing active bio research. Uh, again in the interface of bioengineering, uh, what is shown you here is Dr. Harmeet Malik. Uh, again he did some projects from uh, our department earlier and now he is at you know Fred Hussington uh, Cancer Center where he is uh, looking into the uh, you know various uh, cancer related problems. Dr. Vivek J. Raman from uh, Aerospace Engineering, uh, he pursued an, an active career in the area of understanding the, the brain behavior and uh, thinking about the brain complexity. Uh, in which way it can be utilized from the engineering point of view. Professor uh, Chetan Khosla, he is at Stanford uh, University. Uh, of course, you know he is uh, one of the uh, very esteemed uh, distinguished uh, uh, faculty and colleague for IIT Bombay who keep uh, you know advising uh, at IIT Bombay at different level provides mentorship and in one of the interactions he mentioned that every student of IIT Bombay all the undergrads should get the exposure of biology. And that is just comes with his vast experience looking at how the developments are happening elsewhere in whole world. 
you talk about you know Stanford, MIT, Harvard, uh, California, all of these you know big universities they are pursuing active biology even for the engineering disciplines. So, therefore, the integration of these two technologies can become very uh, feasible. So, therefore, uh, you know these are you know very uh, nice example to convey you that in which way people who are having the active engineering career even they have brought in lot of biological solutions because of their you know basic understanding in biology. So, in this course what we are going to talk to you is not the traditional biology uh, you know many times the biology requires you know mugging lot of terminologies you have the complex world the jargon of those technologies uh, those terminologies. So, those things we are going to try to avoid uh, we are going to talk to you about a new biology which is required for the 21st century. The new biology which will integrate chemistry, physics, biology, mathematics, engineering to deeply understand the biological systems and to provide biology based solutions to the societal problems, which could be in the case of healthcare, environment, food and other disciplines. So, again coming back why this course is required? We want to provide you good background of biological concepts and issues which are relevant for the societal impacts. Biology is going to influence you in one or the other way. So, it is important that you have a decent understanding of this subject which will prepare you well for your next set of career path. The combination of biology knowledge with core engineering, physics or chemistry may contribute to the biomedical research. And this course may also help you to understand and appreciate how biology, engineering and technology are interwoven with each other. So, in the last two lectures we uh, try to emphasize you that uh, why biology is required for uh, engineers, why understanding the biological concepts and knowing it where it can be applied can be so immense value to you that you know uh, it may spark some ideas in your brain which could be truly transformational in nature. So, we really want to uh, talk to you about some of the basic concepts in the next lectures. At the same time uh, while going through the, those basic concepts I would like to emphasize about the actual applications in which way these could be utilized and probably many of the uh, interesting interactions we will also have with the clinicians who will try to pose certain challenges, certain problems in front of you that why even doctors they need lot of engineering solutions in the medical practices. So, uh, you know by combining the lectures, some of the theoretical understanding, the interesting applications and bringing the clinician's perspective, we are going to make it more interactive, going to make it more uh, motivating course for you and as we go along, we will also have you know, many assignments, quiz questions and interactions on the forum, probably also some of the live uh, uh, laboratory demonstration sessions in the uh, coming weeks. Thank you. Mm -hmm.